I figured out a way to get my inexpensive diode laser to make bevel cuts for me and they are perfect. Here's a little test of some of the pieces that I've done right along that edge. Let me show you how this is done. You can see that the laser cutter, when you do a gradient engrave, you get a bevel. Diode lasers are super accurate and got pinpoint precision compared to a CO2 laser. I'm going to show you how to make this pauldron with those bevel cuts right there. We're going to jump into CAD. What I prefer to use is on shape and what you see here on the screen is me working on developing what a really rough idea of a shoulder pauldron. This is nothing more than just to show everybody how this is done. I have a bevel and I will take a quick measurement to find out exactly how far the bevel is offset from one edge. In this case, it's about 4.5 millimeters. Next thing I do is I create a flat pattern. Mesh mixer is free and it will flatten a lot of things accurate enough for every cosplay you could ever imagine. Import the STL file of the surfaces into Mesh Mixer. We'll flatten them out and then we'll export that as an SVG file. Now that we have the SVG file, let's get into how to create this gradient effect that the laser is going to be able to handle. While editing, I realized I missed describing something to everybody. The reason why the laser cutter can do the bevel cut is that I use a gradient from white to black over a distance. Black meaning full power, white meaning no power. And as the diode laser goes across and does this, goes to full power and back and it carves out the foam while doing this. You can start taking it to the next level and doing stuff like that. You see that? Or this. I will in a future video cover how to do a depth map using Blender which then would effectively carve this out optically in the certain depths that you want. And now that we know what causes this bevel cut Let's figure out how to put a gradient along a line on the edge of one of the patterns for your cosplay. Back to our regular scheduled program. Okay, let's jump into Inkscape. We're gonna do file. We're gonna open up that file we just created with Mesh Mixer, which is the pauldron. Now we have this here. We're gonna click on this, right click. We're gonna ungroup it. We don't necessarily need that one. They are a mirror image. And we have this part and this part. So click on this guy. We need to edit the paths. So let's zoom in. We're going to select that guy. We're going to break that node. We're going to break that path. We'll zoom out, come back in, and we're going to break that path. Now we're going to take both those paths and we are going to break apart. There we go. So we have two different paths. So we're going to take this guy and we're just going to put him off to the side. That is the area that is just a straight cut. So we're just going to leave that off to the side. We can match him in again here in a few minutes. Now we've got this guy. First thing we want to do is we want to take this path. We want to simplify it. So now we have that simplified, we're going to take this guy, we're going to select him like this. We're going to hit this plus up in here. And you'll notice that it adds a bunch of nodes, but they are equally spaced or much more equally spaced than they were before. So now we have that done. Let's get out of here. We're going to create a little cube. And in this little cube, we want to have a gradient, which is great. And we want the width to be 4.5 millimeters. And we want the height to be 4.5 millimeters because that is the magic number that we got earlier. So we've got that gradient. We'll bring them up into here and bring that guy up into there. And we get the gradient going the way we want. And it's right there. Now you'll notice that when I click on this, it shows us the color over here and the color it's showing black. And it's also showing that it is almost transparent and we want something solid. We want that solid white it reads better in light burn when you get there. So now we have this guy, we're just going to get out of there. If we haven't selected, we want to do edit, come down and do clone and create clone. There's a reason for the clone and that's so that you have the initial piece that you can modify the file a little bit and do some tweaks if you need to. Now we have that, we're going to do object and object to marker. And that one that was selected, that clone has disappeared, but that's okay. We're going to zoom back out. Now let's select on this line. And what we're gonna do is we're going to come into stroke style. And in stroke style, you have markers. Why don't you see this little magic? When you select on markers, it's gonna move that gradient into here on those. Now you can see the gradient is going the wrong direction. 
this can be managed by this clone that we may zoom in on this guy right here. Let's do, we want the black to the outside and we want to take this clone marker and bring it up there. So now we have the white to the inside, the black to the outside, black being the deepest part of the cut. We've got all that sorted out, but you'll also notice that it's not quite laying on the line like it should. If I extend this out, you'll notice that all of those guys extend out as well. And this is kind of by guess by golly, but we do that and we get it really, really close. Now remember this is EVA foam, it's gonna be forgiving. So if you have something that's optically clear like this, this should work. Now the height itself, you'll notice when I go up and down like this, it changes this height here. So we know that needs to be 4.5 or somewhere close to 4.5. So I'm just gonna grab this. You can change the number up in here. The problem is, is that it's gonna offset everything and kind of be wonky. So again, this is gonna be a little bit of an eyeball thing where we just scroll down to 4.3, 4.5, right there. We're gonna leave that there. Let's zoom out and we'll notice that we don't have all the markers and take this clone guy, we'll move him off to the side. So we've selected that guy, we're gonna go here. We're gonna select all the paths. There, now you can see all the little dots. Now we should be able to do this and we start filling it in until we get all those points. So basically what it's doing is grabbing all those points and throwing a marker on each one of those little paths. Let's select out of that so it looks nice and clear. And now we have that really nice gradient line. Grab this guy, we're gonna move him along and bring him back to his original location and you'll notice that it usually will snap back. Now, if we go in a little bit here, you'll notice that this goes over. We can live with that being over the line a little bit. This one comes a little under, so it's not quite doing what we want. Now, remember how we went up in here and we had the stroke paint and we changed it to markers? Let's do that end. There, now we have it going past. We're gonna have a little bit on either side, but that way we get a nice bevel cut all the way through the part. Now, one thing is that you want this to be rotated the way you want it oriented on the bed of the laser. And the reason why is that it will help you in the long run as far as the way light burn works. Let's move all of this down to the right corner, bottom left corner. Now we have that, we're gonna save it out as two different files. Next thing is we're gonna ungroup us. We're gonna take this guy and we are going to delete. The reason why we're deleting him is that we want just that line for a cut. So then we're gonna do file, save as, polar inside, cut. Control Z or Command Z, we come back in here. We're gonna grab that guy, we're gonna delete him. Now we're gonna do file and export to PNG image. It's gonna come up along here export this now this is going to be the bevel so we're going to do pauldron side bevel we want it to be a png or an image file we do that so that's exported we're going to go to desktop so we've got the pauldron side cut and we've got that entire outline right and now we have that png so let's open that up and you've got that png and we're just gonna hold down shift and kind of get them in there as perfect as we possibly can now, so now we have this entire piece all set up. If anybody knows how to do this quicker than what I'm doing here, um, please let me know. This is more just a proof that this works. On this Otour Afuro laser that I have, if you want to grab one of these things, they're quite inexpensive. There's just a few hundred dollars. You're going to have to make sure that you're venting the smoke and you want to get the um, long focus, which is the one that will do cutting better than the short focus. So get the long focus and a little air assist nozzle and air assist if you have it. If you want one of these things, you can see the link down below. What I found the settings that work well for me is 100% power and about five millimeter dark foams. The color does change things, but works quite well at 1000 millimeters per minute at 100% power. So we're gonna do the cut. The cut, we actually want to be the second thing. So we're gonna come down here. Now the image, I find that about 3,200 millimeters per second, 100% power and zero. And that's gonna allow for that bevel to happen. Now we're gonna hit play on light burn and let's see this thing dice out. Is it super fast? No. But here's the deal, is that while that's cutting, I can be painting, I can be doing a million other things. Regardless, 
I still think that between designing something out, printing it, cutting the paper for the pattern, laying it down, tracing the pattern, cutting the pattern, then doing the bevel cut or doing the bevel cut while that is happening. Once this workflow that I've done is a little more seamless, it'll probably take you less time, including the cutting time. Here I am throwing it together, throwing some glue on. When you laser cut foam, it centers the edge or it kind of skins it over. Sometimes you want to give it a little bit of a rough edge. The way this engraving work though, you can see leaves a rough edge. And I find that it takes a little bit to get the contact cement on there, but once you do, it's on there for good and that the seams are actually quite good. But all the other straight laser cut edges, hit it with some sandpaper and rough it up because you're going to find the contact cement will actually go in and stick a little better. That is how I do bevel cuts on an inexpensive laser. For me, this is a bit of a game changer because it can totally speed up my workflow. It can also make me much, much more precise. If you're a person who does those little body suits or those muscle suits where you, you carve out little V's in the foam, V's in the foam, you could probably use this method where it doesn't go all the way through the foam, but it carves just enough of the V that you can come in. That way you can get like ultra precise edges and folds to get that look. If you need the laser, you'll find a link down below. Hopefully that's helped you out. And I hope to have you guys watch my next video. Hit subscribe and that kind of stuff if you really care to.